Welcome Trinidad and Tobago to a News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Virtual Educa Two-Day Symposium 2014 begins as educators from across the Caribbean region are brought up to date with the latest information and communication technologies to implement in their classrooms. With 53 early childhood centers constructed in just over four years, the Education Minister announces that TNT remains fast on track in achieving the goal of universal childhood education. And the Ministry of Water Resources and the Port of Spain City Cooperation agree to collaborative efforts in order to alleviate flooding in the capital city by the end of 2014. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Top of the news. Educators from across the region converged at the Hyatt Regency Hotel for a two-day forum titled Virtual Educa. The aim is to assess the use and impact of information and communication technologies, ICTs in the educational system of Latin American and Caribbean states and to show teachers how to implement these tools in the classroom. Bridging the gap between the information world and teaching in the classroom took a giant leap for the Caribbean region this week when Trinidad and Tobago played host to the Virtual Educa Symposium 2014. The conference focuses on information communication technology playing a greater role in educating students and is being facilitated by the Ministry of Education and the Organization of American States. In opening the two-day forum, Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopising explained to regional partners the need to implement ICT into schools across this part of the hemisphere. Education is evolving due to the impact of the internet and we cannot teach our students in the same manner in which we were taught. Change is necessary and the time has come for us as educators across the region, hemisphere and globe to recognize that we need technology in every classroom and in every student and teacher's hand because it, because it is the pen and paper of our time and it is the lens through which we experience much of our world. The conference is in its second year for 2014 focusing on the challenges of the Caribbean in education. Secretary General Jose Maria Anton has been one of the main driving forces in getting this type of education moving within the Caribbean and explained the aim of the program as empowering the youth of today to meet the demands of tomorrow. We believe that education is the key factor for the 21st century. Key factor because in this knowledge society that everybody is talking about, education and training is key for social inclusion. Laptops, infrastructure, are a must, but without a holistic approach to education, with the teachers using those tools with worldwide quality content in the computers, with students that do not know more than their teachers, know different things. And we live in a society where you have put everything together to be a whole. Providing a demonstration of how technology can be used in a classroom was Keith Laban, who showed how laptops and smartphones can be utilized in bringing teaching to life. From geography lessons to field trips and biology, he explained this method as using a combination of virtual reality and physical elements to create something called augmented reality. Suppose that I am a geography teacher and I'm doing a lesson, say, on volcanoes. And I would like to have the students uh, see certain artifacts, like, for example, cider cones and all these things. So I, with a marker like this, in front of a high-definition camera, in this case we are using Microsoft Connect, uh, we could view it. As you see, we could turn it, we could twist it, we could do all sorts of magical Harry Potter-like things with it. So, so this is a cider cone, 
Um, suppose you were explaining different things and we wanted to see a caldera, for example, which is another thing in geography. We have a caldera here, another 3D object which we could manipulate in real time. I have one of my students there and he could be as if he's in Barcelona, observing the sights and sounds. <laughs> and with a swipe of his hand, he could switch, change the background and move around and swipe and go forward or go back. So you could have certain things you could do in the class, role playing. The forum will involve teachers in workshops geared at enhancing digital content in the classroom using technology in teaching and creating digital content. Kimberam Callowan, News 4. Staying with education, government remains fast on track in constructing early childhood care centers across the country in its goal of achieving universal childhood education. Now, Minister of Education Dr. Tim Gobusing provided an outline of the ministry's goals for the program during Friday's lower house sitting. Over 53 early childhood care education centers have been constructed over the past four years. This according to Education Minister Dr. Tim Gopisingh, who is responding to questions laid in the lower house on Friday. The minister says government remains committed to providing universal childhood education to the over 36,000 children that fall into the preschool category. The construction of early childhood education centers throughout Trinidad and Tobago is determined based on the demography and the population of the children ages three and four. And Samoa obviously fits within that demographic pattern. And in the determination of the construction over the last four years, the People's Partnership government, as we promised in the People's Partnership Manifesto, that we will bring about universal early childhood education, that, in, uh, in, that the 36,000 students or children is three and four must be formally housed in an early childhood education center. He outlined plans for ECCE program in 2014, which also include the construction of additional centers, as well as the rebuilding of existing ones in need of improvements. We have built early childhood education centers in Maloney, for Aruka Maloney, the member of parliament, maybe may take note. Digo Martin Northeast, the Maraval ECCE center, which I spoke about with the minister, member for Digo Martin Northeast. Aruka Maloney again, Malabar ECC Center, um, ECC Center, Pomegranate Avenue, Malabar Government Primary School, that is close to the Government Primary School, San Fernando, the Wellington ECC Center, Center and member for St. Joseph, we constructed the Mirage Hill ECC Center on Baker Trace, Mirage Hill, San Grande. And then Laventil East Morva, we constructed the Lisa Gardens ECC Center. Construction of these centers are said to be possible as a result of funding provided by the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB. Minister Gopi Singh provided a breakdown of those constructed so far. I'm proud to say that we have constructed also in St. Anne's for the member for Port of Spain, North St. Anne's West. That is number eight, St. Anne's Gardens Road, St. Anne's. St. Joseph at Mount Hope, Pioneer Drive and Sunshine Avenue, this member for St. Joseph. San Fernando East, Corinth Hills, that's the HDC site on Ethan Lane, Corinth Hills, Corinth, San Fernando. And for Point Forte, we constructed at Salazar Trace and Southern Gardens, two ECC centers in Point Forte. Phase two of the construction program will include the building of five additional schools in Tobago, while over 50 more are expected to be completed by December 2014. Kimbram Callowan, News 4. The government is seeking to ensure that the buildings which public servants work in meet health and safety requirements and regulations. This confirmation comes from Minister of Finance and the Economy, Senator the Honorable Larry Hawaii, at a recent post-cabinet media briefing. Speaking at a recent post-cabinet media briefing, Finance Minister Senator Larry Hawaii says there are plans to bring some government buildings up to health and safety codes. Minister Hawaii says the renovations will affect several government divisions under his watch, including the Board of Inland Revenue, the VAT Department and other divisions of the Ministry of Finance. He says the work will be done on a phased basis due to logistical limitations. The Cabinet has approved the funding to allow us to complete those buildings um, and complete the work that needs to be done. We've, uh, we have done work in the Ministry of Finance building 
and we've moved uh, officers from the VAT administration building into the Ministry of Finance building. Um, so that has already been done. Um, the Treasury building, we expect that that should be, the work there should be completed within the next two weeks. And at Victoria Court, we've completed that work. Um, the Treasury, the Trinidad House, we expect the, the work there to be completed uh, about by the first week of June and to get all of the relevant um, approvals in at that time um, from fire services, from um, the Occupation Safety and Health Agency and so on, so that we should be in a position to address and um, fully meet all the requirements as far as those premises are concerned by, um, by the first week of June. Minister Hawaii is encouraging the public to make use of the online facilities available, particularly for the Board of Inland Revenue. He says the online system will be boosted to cater for the expected increase in traffic on the websites and says this is one way of ensuring citizens aren't inconvenienced while renovations take place. Enhance our, the, the ability to interact online. And I think that that's very important um, from a point of view of customer convenience. And uh, we have agreed um, and have started the process of upgrading our information technology system infrastructure. Um, at the Board of Inland Revenue, we'll be spending another $15 million um, over the next few months in, in doing some of the upgrades, particularly as it, it relates to security um, that we need to build into the system to ensure that um, the, the safety of taxpayer information. Uh, but we, over the next few weeks, we, a few months, sorry, we will be um, completing an upgrade of that system, and therefore we hope that should even obviate the need for, um, for, for citizens to have to come to the Board of Inland Revenue directly. Minister Hawaii says government employees working in unsatisfactory conditions will soon be a thing of the past, as the government's campus plaza will soon be completed. Requests for proposals have been sent out for the completion of work on the buildings, which includes repair works due to site deterioration and sewer configuration. The buildings will house the Ministry of Legal Affairs, Inland Revenue Division and the Customs and Excise Division. Gregory McBurney, News 4. We'll take a short break. You're with News 4. Stay with us. Welcome back. By the end of 2014, significant relief to flooding in the capital city is expected. This is due to collaborative efforts between the Ministry of Environment and Water Resources, Port of Spain, City Corporation and the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB. A recent meeting at the Ministry's offices, chaired by Senator the Honorable Ganga Singh, Minister of Environment and Water Resources, and attended by... Port of Spain, His Worship Raymond Timkey, was held to review the Port of Spain Flood Alleviation and Drainage Program. An overview of the program was presented by the Ministry's Project Execution Unit and Engineering Consultant Ms. Elizabeth Ingerfield. During the meeting, presentations were conducted with regards to the project overview, pre-implementation works completed to date, and project details for the Port of Spain Flood Alleviation Program. Minister Singh has attributed this collaborative effort to ensuring the sustainable development and sanitation of the capital city. However, he expressed the need for more efficient garbage management and collection by the city corporation in line with the ministry's aim to alleviate flooding in the city. In response to the proposed scope of works for the city, Mayor Timkey pledged his full support to the initiative and offered the services of the corporation on this project. A memorandum of understanding is to be signed between the Ministry of Port of Spain, the city corporation, to formally cement collaborative efforts. Switching gears, the Ministry of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, MTES, has launched its skills website, skillstnt.com, which provides the public with easy access on the services offered by certified and skilled professionals available in the country. The website will be managed by the National Training Agency and forms part of an initiative by the government to develop and implement a comprehensive marketing and communication plan using digital media. According to the Ministry of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, the new website www.skillstnt.com 
will facilitate any national seeking to advertise his or his technical skills. Senator the Honorable Fazil Karim, Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, while delivering the feature address at the launch, said anyone with internet access that needs a plumber, electrician, auto mechanic, or any other technical and vocational professional via this website would be able to search for details on their services and their reputation for reliability and quality through a rating system generated by other users of this service. He said registration was opened to everyone. And for those persons who may have gone to school but not completed their vocational education and training, this is an opportunity for them to be assessed since they left to where they are now, having acquired all these skills and competencies. So it will be important for us, for our young people, our youth, in the creation of jobs and the seeking of job opportunities. But I want to tell you that you and I will know persons who work, who have full-time employment, but who enjoy practicing these trades, maybe for, to save the cost of doing these repairs at home. You might have somebody who studied academia, but also have a little idea of plumbing, or masonry, or welding, or carpentry, and may help themselves at their homes. But you also have those persons who work full-time and who pursue a vocation to supplement their income. This is an opportunity for them as well. Minister Karam said this service will also be available to prisoners who are pursuing skills training through the Youth Training and Employment Partnership Program, YTEP. This is an opportunity as well for our, pers our citizens, our men and women who may be incarcerated and who are pursuing a skill through YTEP and the retraining program in the prisons to also be assessed and certified and placed on this database. This is an opportunity and an access for accomplishment and achievement. The database would also include service providers who were awarded Trinidad and Tobago's National Vocational Qualifications, TNT NVQs, or Caribbean Vocational Qualifications, CVQs. Felicia wilson Mon News 4. The Ministry of Public Utilities hosted its fourth meeting with stakeholders of the Utilities Assistance Program, UAP, at Prince's Tongue, bringing staff members of constituency offices, executives and councillors of regional corporations up to date on social intervention program through the UAP government grants financial assistance to eligible members of the public in paying their monthly utility bills. The Honorable Nizam Baksh, Minister of Public Utilities, hosted the Utilities Assistance Program Sensitization Seminar with stakeholders at JR&D Mohammed Convention Center at St. Croix Road, Princess Town. According to the Minister, the goal of these seminars is to explain fully the mechanism of the Utilities Assistance Program, UAP, which is a social intervention program that provides financial assistance to eligible individuals for the payment of their electricity and water bills. While delivering opening remarks, Minister Baksh noted that the program has been making its way through various parts of the country to ensure that eligible households were not left out of this key government initiative. He said previous seminars were held in the eastern, western and southwestern regions of Trinidad, targeting areas such as Arima, Port of Spain, San Juan, Laventil and San Fernando. Over the past month, we have visited the West, the East and South, Trinidad, to share with members of Parliament, councillors and representatives of various government ministries the opportunities provided by the UAP for assisting those among us who are unable to access or pay for electricity and water services. The three preceding functions were well attended and involved lively discussions on what we could do as public servants and representatives of the people to maximize the benefits offered by the recently expanded Utilities Assistance Program. The two new elements introduced to the Utilities Assistance Program are the purchase of water tanks and solar panels. The Minister thanked members of Parliament, the Executive and Councillors of Regional Corporations and representatives of Government Ministries who attended the various seminars for their participation and cooperation 
in ensuring information reached members of the public. I'm happy that all of you from the various offices spanning the four constituencies which have been represented today could join with us in our attempt to better serve our fellow citizens. Your cooperation and assistance in the implementation of the services we are about to discuss are not only necessary for the success of the project, but they will be greatly appreciated by the persons who have worked so hard to make the expansion of the UAP a reality. You are the key players in promoting these programs and so because you are the one who interact with the people in your various communities and we refer here to people in the social services, community development, the councillors and the staff and MPs offices and so so that we know that you are the one who could take this, these programs out to the public outside there. According to Minister Baksh, since the establishment of the Utilities Assistance Program in 2010, some 12,300 needy citizens have benefited directly. Felicia wilson Mon News 4. Sports news is after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, cycling has produced many great individuals and few will be remembered as fondly as Roger Smart. The former national champion and mechanic died on Friday in a vehicular crash, according to the Trinidad and Tobago Cycling Federation. Known as Bruno to those who closely knew him, Smart mostly Sorry, Smart most recently captured three titles in the Masters category, 45 to 49 at the National Track Championships. Offering condolences, uh, the Honorable Anna Roberts, Minister of Sports, said, open quote, This is indeed a tragic news for Roger's family and friends and to the cycling community. Roger represented the red, white and black with pride on the regional and international circuit. Whether on his bike or as a mechanic for elite competitors, Roger's contribution to club Madonna Wheelers and country will not soon be forgotten. His loss is a shocking blow to all who knew and admired his fun-loving and committed spirit. End quote. The minister, uh, the minister of Sport and the Sports Company of Trinidad and Tobago offer sincere condolences to Roger Smart's family, friends and fellow cyclists and the entire cycling community. Well, we take a break. More news after this. Welcome back. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service is ensuring that its motto to protect and serve extends to its very own. One such way is by promoting healthy lifestyles among its servicemen and women. At its annual health and wellness fair, there were many who were provided the information necessary to improve the quality of their own lives in as much as they spend preserving the lives of others. On Saturday morning, while many were still fast asleep, members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, along with their friends and family, engaged in a fun 5K and health run from the police barracks in St. James to the Queen's Park Savannah and back. The event was a feature of an annual health and wellness fair stemming from a collaboration between the TTPS Garden Emergency Branch and the Ministry of Health. While officers would usually undergo this type of training and exercise regimen, Health B 2014, as it is fondly known, extends beyond the members of the Guard and Emergency Branch, inviting civilians to also participate. In its third year, the run was a successful one and challenged many of the participants. However, capturing the title of fastest male was Ted John at 21 minutes and 3 seconds, while the fastest female was Jenna Gomes at 24 minutes and 57 seconds. not really a very physical person, but it showed me that I'm capable of stuff and it wasn't really that difficult once you put your mind to it. Excuse me. So I want to find out from you how you thought your run was. That's good. It was amazing. It was good. And how was the run for you? It was good. 
Following the run, the activities moved to inside the police academy where an official ceremony took place to launch the health fair aspect. Members of the El Dorado Police Youth Club, along with the latest recruits, visited the various booths and learned about maintaining a healthy lifestyle. It was initiated by the police, the guard and emergency branch. They came and they said, Miss Lewis, we would like to develop a program that promotes the wellness of our officers. And so the Ministry of Health got in at that point in time and started working with them to identify different ways in which we can support the well-being of the officers under the police service. Uh, the first thing we developed together was this initiative, which they named Health Beat. And this initiative targeted two key populations. It targeted police officers themselves, but we also felt we needed to target the family because police officers don't exist on their own. They exist in the context of families. The acting police commissioner praised the corporate entities that supported the health beat and noted that this level of collaboration must grow and be broadened. Trinidad and Tobago Police Service has been presenting a mantra that in order for things to improve in the country, there is the critical issue of partnership, and we are seeking partnership in various forms. This is one example of a partnership which is growing and growing in the right direction. Uh, we are seeking to find ways and means of having not just an annual hell beat, um, that we can even expand it to see if we can have quarterly hell beat and spread it across so that we can capture a wider cross section of the police service and impact even more uh, members of the families of police officers. So yes, partnership is critical. More um, agencies come on board, makes it better, the relationship improves. At the end of the day, the country um, benefits. The theme of this year's Health Beat, Improving Health, Preserving Life, speaks to an important part of the TTPS mission via another avenue of providing the necessary access to information to lead healthy lifestyles. Saturday's initiative proves that the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service cares and is committed to the health and well-being of its members. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Well, thank you, Nikolai. And that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. Remember, you can view a repeat of our newscast weekdays at 6 a.m. and feel free to visit our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash our TV4. I am Joseph Lopez. Thank you for watching us.